A high promontory above the sweeping grasslands of the Caspian Steppe, marks the spot where humans have come and gone along the Silk Road for thousands of years. But 1.77 million years ago, this place was a crossroads for a different kind of species. Among them were saber-toothed cats, Etruscan wolves, hyenas the size of lions, and archaic members of the human family. Primitive hominins poked their heads into animal dens to scavenge abandoned kills, filleting meat from the bones of mammoths and wolves with crude stone tools and eating it raw. They stalked deer, as the animals drank from an ancient lake and gathered berries, and nuts from chestnut and walnut trees lining nearby rivers. Sometimes the hominins themselves became the prey, as gnaw marks from big cats or hyenas on their fossilized limb bones testify. In the Pleistocene, the climate of Georgia was more humid and forested than it is today, comparable to a Mediterranean climate. The fossil site was located near an ancient lake shore, surrounded by forests and grasslands and home to a diverse fauna of Pleistocene animals. The favorable climate might have acted as a refuge for hominins in the early Pleistocene and it would have been reachable from Africa through the Levantine Corridor. This site offers an unparalleled glimpse into a harsh early chapter in human evolution, when primitive members of our genus struggled to survive in a new land, far north of their ancestors' African home, braving winters without clothes or fire and competing with fierce carnivores for meat. The site has yielded beautifully preserved fossils that are the oldest hominins known outside of Africa, including five skulls and about 50 skeletal bones. Until the discovery of the first jawbone at Manasai 25 years ago, researchers thought that the first hominins to leave Africa were classic Homo erectus, also known as H. ergaster in Africa. These tall, relatively large-brained ancestors of modern humans arose about 1.9 million years ago, and soon afterward invented a sophisticated new tool, the hand axe. They were thought to be the first people to migrate out of Africa, making it all the way to Java at the far end of Asia, as early as 1.6 million years ago. But as the bones and tools from this site show, a different picture of the earliest explorers is emerging. Indeed, the fossils have made it clear that these pioneers were startlingly primitive, with small bodies about 1.5 meters tall, simple tools, and brains one-third to one-half the size of modern humans. Some paleontologists even believe they provide a better glimpse of the early, primitive forms of Homo erectus, than fragmentary African fossils. How did these primitive hominins manage to trek at least 6,000 kilometers from sub-Saharan Africa to the Caucasus Mountains? What was it that allowed them to move out of Africa without fire and without very large brains? How did they survive? Well, they did not have it easy to say the least. To look at the teeth and jaws of the hominins at Manasai is to see a mouthful of pain. Researchers found that, compared with modern hunter-gatherers from Greenland and Australia, a teenager at Manasai had dental problems at a much younger age, a sign of generally poor health. The teen had cavities, dental crowding, and hyperplasia, a line indicating that enamel growth was halted at some point in childhood, probably because of malnutrition or disease. Another individual suffered from a serious dental infection that damaged the jawbone, and could have been the cause of death. Chipping and wearing several others suggested that they used their teeth as tools, and to crack bones for marrow. And all the hominins' teeth were coated with plaque, the product of bacteria thriving in their mouths, because of inflammation of the gums or the pH of their food or water. This dental mayhem put every one of them on a road to toothlessness. In fact, by following a trail of stone tools and fossils, researchers traced possible routes for the spread of early Homo out of Africa to the far corners of Asia, starting over two million years ago. They did have tools to supplement their frail bodies. Crude tools, but lots of them. Researchers have found more than 15,000 stone flakes and cores, as well as more than 900 artifacts in layers of sediments dating from 1.76 million to 1.85 million years ago. Remarkably, even though Homo erectus in East Africa had invented hand axes, part of the Acheulean toolkit, by 1.76 million years ago, none have been found here in Georgia. Instead, 
The tools belong to the Oldo and All Mode 1 toolkit, the first tools made by hominins, which include simple flakes for scraping and cutting, and spherical choppers for pounding. The tools at Manasai are crafted out of 50 different raw materials, which suggests the toolmakers weren't particularly selective. They were not choosing their raw material, they were using everything. But that simple toolkit somehow enabled them to go global, and they were able to adjust their behavior to a wide variety of ecological situations. Perhaps the key was the ability to butcher meat with these simple tools. If hominins could eat meat, they could survive in new habitats where they didn't know which plants were toxic. Meat eating was a significant change in human behavior. Even with their little stone tools, these guys were not pacifists, competing for meat directly with large carnivores. Piles of cobblestones near the entrance of an ancient gully, which suggests the hominins tried to fend off, or hunt, predators by stoning them. These hominids set their own course as they left Africa. Researchers had long thought that Homo erectus swept out of their native continent in the wake of African mammals they hunted and scavenged. But all of the roughly 17,000 animal bones analyzed so far belong to Eurasian species, not African ones. The only mammals not of Eurasian origin are the hominins, striking evidence the hominins were behaving differently from other animals. Perhaps venturing into new territory allowed the hominins to hunt prey that would not have known to fear and flee meat-eating humans. Whatever impelled them, the explorers left behind a trail of tools that have enabled researchers to trace their steps out of Africa. There, the oldest stone tools, likely fashioned by the most archaic humans, such as small-brained Homo habilis, date reliably to 2.6 million years ago in Ethiopia, and, possibly, 3.3 million years in Kenya. New dates for stone tools and bones with cut marks in the high plateau of northeastern Algeria, suggest that hominins had crossed the Sahara by 2.2 million years ago when it was wetter and greener. The next oldest tools are those from Georgia, at 1.85 million years old. The trail of stone tools then hopscotches to Asia, where Mode 1 toolkits show up by nearly 1.7 million years ago in China and 1.6 million in Java, along with Homo erectus fossils. New finds in China are claimed to be even older. The identity of the people who dropped these stone tools is a mystery that has only deepened with study of the Georgian fossils. The excavation team has classified all the hominins at the Georgia site as Homo erectus, but they are so primitive and variable that researchers debate whether they belong in Homo erectus, Homo habilis, a separate species, Homo georgicus, or a mix of all three, who may have inhabited the site at slightly different dates. The cranial capacity of the Dmanasai hominins ranges from 546 to 775 cubic centimeters, with an average of 631 cubic centimeters. As such, their brain size overlaps with that of Homo habilis, and falls below the standard cranial capacity otherwise ascribed to Homo erectus and Homo ergaster. The encephalization quotient, or brain-to-body mass ratio, of the Dmanasai hominins, based on skulls 1 to 4, is in the range of 2.6 to 3.1. This is at the lower end of estimates for Homo ergaster or Homo erectus, and more similar to Homo habilis and Australopithecines. The encephalization quotient of skull 5 was estimated at only 2.4, within the range of variation for Australopithics. Nor did these hominins walk just like modern humans. An analysis of cross-sections of three toe bones found that the cortical bone, the dense outer layer, wasn't buttressed in the same way as it is in the toes of modern humans. When these hominins pushed off, the forces on their toes must have been distributed differently. They may have walked a bit more like chimps, perhaps pushing off the outside edge of their foot. Thus. Homo erectus now includes the one million year old specimen from Java, as well as fossils from South Africa, East Africa, Georgia, Europe, and China, that span roughly 300,000 to 1.9 million years. Yet, no other species matches the Dmanasai specimens better. For example, the shapes of their dental palate and skulls match those of Homo erectus, rather than Homo habilis. 
the variation in skull size and facial shape is no greater than in other species, including both modern humans or chimps, especially when the growth of the jaw and face over a lifetime are considered. Though the fossil's small stature and brains might fit best with Homo habilis, their relatively long legs and modern body proportions place them in Homo erectus. Morphological traits unifying all of the skulls, though the degree in which they are pronounced differ, include large brow ridges and large faces. Some anthropologists favor subsuming the taxon under Homo erectus as Homo erectus georgicus or Homo erectus ergaster georgicus. But the topic is still debated to this day. We are going to be giving away a t-shirt to a random subscriber this month, so if you find this video compelling, please subscribe, share the video, hit the like button, and leave a comment or suggestion. Regardless of the Dmanisai people's precise identity, researchers studying them agree that the wealth of fossils and artifacts coming from the site offer rare evidence for a critical moment in the human story. They show that it didn't take a technological revolution or a particularly big brain to cross continents, and they suggest an origin story for first explorers all across Asia. Perhaps some members of the group of primitive Homo erectus that gave rise to these people also pushed farther east, where their offspring evolved into later, bigger-brained Homo erectus on Java. This was at the same time as Homo erectus in Africa was independently evolving bigger brains and bodies. The archaic Manasai hominins may have employed aggressive scavenging, throwing small rocks to pill for food from local carnivores. It is probable that this power scavenging was done in groups for protection, and it may have led to the development of kinship-dependent social cooperation. Moreover, there is indirect evidence of social cooperation in Skull 4, from an individual that had lost all but a single tooth by the time of his death. This beautifully preserved skull and jawbone from a hominin who had lost all but one tooth several years before death. This specimen not only represents the earliest case of severe masticatory impairment in the hominin fossil record, but also raises questions about alternative subsistence strategies in early humans. The old individual would have lived for a relatively long time after losing the teeth, indicated by the sockets of the teeth roots having been filled with bone tissue something that is only possible if the individual in question is alive. Without fire to cook food, it would have been difficult for a toothless individual to survive for years in a periodically cold environment. Though it is possible, through the use of pounding tools, that he would have survived on his own through consuming soft animal tissues, such as brains and marrow, a more compelling possibility is that he might have been cared for by other members of his species. Recorded instances of wild, non-human primates showing comparable masticatory impairment are extremely rare. Because no apes live today in a temperate environment similar to that at Manasai, the behavioral implications of the toothless specimen can only be considered within the context of the evidence preserved at the site. Indeed, meat may have been key to the success of these hominins living at high latitudes, especially in winter, and the consumption of soft tissue such as bone marrow or brain may have increased the chances of survival of individuals with masticatory impairment. The individual apparently survived for a lengthy period without consuming foods that required heavy chewing, possibly by eating soft plant and animal foods or by virtue of help from other individuals. Therefore, the specimen raises interesting questions regarding social structure and subsistence strategies of early humans that warrant further investigation.